Hey ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mel Herbert here. I'm in the studio. Uh, we're sort of just, you know, rocking around here in the studio, but we're going to go out of the studio. We're going to go over uh, outside because we're trying to turn the studio zero carbon. And the way to do that here in Southern California is to put up a big giant solar array. So I want to tell you about that solar array, the panels we're using, the difference between string inverters, micro inverters, and power optimizers, which might have implications for you. We're going to have a number of people that come over to the studio here and they shoot and they bring their Tesla. So we're going to get to zero. How are we going to do that? Let's go outside and look at the array. Now, I know many of you want me you know, to always do my recordings from the bar, but every now and then you've got to venture outside a little bit. So we're outside. We're at one of the buildings at the studio here, and it turns out to be one of those uh, very few gray days here in Southern California. But I want you to check out this array. This array is perfectly south facing. So in the Northern Hemisphere, it's fantastic. The sun's going to be there all day. So it's pretty cool. Um, these all are at the same angle and there's really no significant shading that occurs at any part of the day. We're going to get back to why that's important because that would be perfect for what's called a string inverter. String inverter is where all of these panels are on the same string. They produce DC. It goes down to uh, an inverter turns it to AC and then you use it in your house or you send it off to the grid. Um, so that is what a string inverter would be perfect for. Same angle, same amount of light, um, no shadowing. Because if you put a little shadowing just over one of those panels behind me on a string inverter, if it was a pure string inverter system, just a little bit of shadowing, then the voltage and the output has to go down on the whole system. So you can actually shade just like 10% of that system on a string inverter where everything's linked together, which is the way most panels used to be done, and you can lose 60% of your output for complicated reasons that we won't go into because mostly I don't really understand them. The total amount of energy coming out of each panel has to be about the same, so everything has to come down. Even with a little bit of shading, it's a big problem. But since this is at the same angle, no shading, you could put that on a string inverter. But I want to go to the other part of the structures over here and show you that um, what most people's circumstances is it's a little bit of shading or they've got some panels at slightly different angles so they're going to produce a different amount of energy during the day and you do not want those on a traditional string inverter. So in this part of the building you see that you've got some shading that potentially is going to occur from that tree, from those vents, right next to uh, those panels. And so you don't want a string inverter on this system. You don't want that because that's going to mean that the whole voltage, the output is going to have to come down. And if you add to that, there's another grouping of panels, there's about five panels over on this part of uh, the building, that are at a different angle. So they're going to have a different power output at different parts of the day than over on that sort of more main part of the building. So you've got two reasons you don't want a string inverter. You've got shadowing, and you've got different parts of the system that's chopped up that's going to result in different power outputs. And so it goes down to the lowest common denominator. What is the weakest panel? Everything's going to come down to that. So you do not want a string inverter in this system a system and a roof which is similar to many people's situation. So what is that different thing? Well again, if you look at all these beautiful panels up here, there's two ways that the smart people who make solar panels get around this. One way is to put an inverter under each of these panels. On this array there are 13 panels. So you would put an AC, a DC to AC converter on each of these panels so that if one got shaded, it wouldn't matter because all the others are doing their own conversion of that direct current to alternating current, and so they're unaffected. The problem with that has been, that means a tiny inverter under each of the panels, lots more electronics, more expensive, and more points of failure. Those expenses have come down a lot. The point of failure has gotten a lot better, so microinverters are a real option. But there is actually another option which is being used on this set of panels and over on the other um, structure. Instead of putting a microinverter on that one, and a microinverter on that one, and a microinverter on that one, is there's this thing called power optimization. So that, again, and this is even more complicated, and we need a real expert to explain it, but each panel has sort of electronics in it, and they're all on a string, and they send their electricity off to the inverter, and at the inverter it'll convert it from DC to AC. But shading any one of these is not a problem, because this is smart enough, this power optimization is smart enough, so that you don't get this problem with shading in a classic string inverter. You don't have to have a full micro inverter under each one, but you do have to have this electronics so that it can sort of change amperage and voltage so that if there's a bit of shading, it doesn't affect the entire system. And so these uh, power optimizers, they're called, is what a lot of people are using because they're less expensive than the micro inverter systems currently. 
and they're much better than the string inverters and they're just about as good as micro inverters. So these panels, by the way, are LG and they're 350 watts per panel. We have about 38 panels in the entire array that we're going to be using here on the studio. And that means we're going to be able to produce about 20,000 kilowatt hours per year, which should be more than we need to run the studio, plus plugging in, plugging in a number of electric cars. So this alone should allow us to go zero. We've also ordered three Tesla walls, which will give us about 45 kilowatt hours of storage, which should mean, in theory, that the vast majority of the time we could use our own generated electricity during the day, cooling and heating the studio, using the lights and the cameras would be coming mostly off the array. We'd be also be storing into the um, batteries because we'd be making a lot more electricity than we need. Then overnight we could use the battery. And if we needed backup, we're also grid tied. But with a system like this, for what our needs in a studio, we can probably become almost 100% off grid the vast majority of the time except on days like today when there's just no sun and all clouds. Probably couldn't do it on a day like today. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Mel Hooper. That's a quick overview. String inverters, micro inverters, and power optimization. You're going to hear a lot about this if you're going to go out and get a solar array. You're going to want to ask, do I get some shading? Have I got a chopped up system with different angles for different panels? Um, should I get a micro inverter system? Should I get a string inverter system? Probably not. Or should I get this uh, power optimization? And right now it seems to be the sweet spot is power optimization. The other thing to say about these panels, these are some of the most efficient on the market right now, 350 watts per panel. You pay a significant amount more for those right now, but when you've got to have um, things like this, so if you look at this array, if you look at this array, because it's actually a dwelling structure where people can actually live in there, you have to have setbacks. And so on this side in particular, you can see there's a three foot setback and up the top, you can't see it on this, but there's another three foot setback. If this was just sort of a garage that wasn't gonna be used for anything, then you could have no setback here in California. So depending on what the structure is, where the panels are, you might have to have setbacks so that, for example, if it were caught fire, that uh, the firemen could run up there and run around it and not have to walk on the glass and potentially get into trouble with that. So. Um, because we couldn't just fill up this whole thing with cheaper panels, we went with more expensive panels so that although the area in which we can put the panels is less, the output is actually the same as if we put in cheaper sort of 250 watt panels. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a quick overview of uh, the studio, its panels. Hope that uh, is useful to you. Of course, I had to come back to the bar area and do the traditional throwing of the mic.